Today I want to know why you want to be a personal support worker. Why not a registered practical nurse or a registered nurse? Why do you choose to be a personal support worker? Hmm? So some of you, it's because the length of studies is shorter and if you need to earn money sooner than later, personal support worker can get you there. If you work in a facility, the personal support workers are going to be going in and out of every room, getting everyone up. Of course, not always, but often we're being fought while trying to help these people, as opposed to what the RPN is doing. They have to delegate, they have to oversee. So while they're crushing pills into chocolate pudding and feeding it to the resident, you might be getting punched, kicked, and spat on. I don't know what your reason is, but I can tell you my reason for becoming a personal support worker instead of a nurse is because I didn't get the required math back in high school when it was the easiest. I graduated with 514 math, which in Quebec was regular math. It was the minimum math that you were required to do in order to graduate from high school. And it was hard for me then. In my high school days, I came to the conclusion that I just have to be a journalist, I guess. Life happens and I fell in love with nursing as a career because in my early 20s, my parents were both terminally ill. One had heart issues and the other had breast cancer. For many years, I took care of them. I was the youngest sibling and the only one that lived in province. Being by their side in the hospital atmosphere became a second home for me. And being by their side in the caregiver role was something I found myself very good at and also very fulfilling. So I got busy trying to make up those math classes in adult ed in my early 20s so that I could become a nurse. However, when I was 21, both my parents passed away within five months of each other. And the grief and everything else that comes with both your parents dying set in. And being able to focus on math and see it to completion became exponentially difficult for me. So I became a PAB. A PAB is a préposé au bénéficiaire, which is basically a PSW, but in Quebec, and landed a job in one of Montreal's teaching hospitals and had a wonderful career there. I was hired on call, so I didn't have a set schedule. They would just call me when they needed me, which was almost always a night shift and in the ER. So I got a lot of experience very fast and I really enjoyed the work, but I cannot deny how heavy working in a hospital or facility is and it doesn't pay that much. Eventually, I needed something more secure and it wouldn't hurt to have something higher paying. So I found myself leaving healthcare, going into the financial industry. A bank will hire you with high school education, train you, provide you with benefits, provide you with sick days. If you do a great job, they'll make you a team lead in a year. Keep that up, maybe you'll be a manager in another year or so. So a lot of room for advancement. Whereas as a PSW, you could work as a PSW for 20 years, you're still a PSW. There's no team lead of PSWs. There's no manager of PSWs. You have to re-educate and come back in a different profession if you want a higher role. Working in finance wasn't the role I wanted that was giving back to society and providing value in exchange for money, but could provide the lifestyle and security you want. When COVID happened and we went into lockdown, we can all remember that that was difficult for everyone. Sadly, a colleague of mine took their own life at that time. And the response of the company we worked for upon announcing his death was basically, all right, well, all hands on deck, let's get back to work. This caused me to feel like just another number and completely replaceable. That may be the case in any industry, even healthcare. However, I knew for me it was time for a big change and I became a PSW for the second time. <laughs> All I've ever wanted to do was be a nurse, but I've become a PSW now twice. Becoming a PSW worked out a bit better for me this time. In the last year, there were a few times where it would have been really helpful to my clients if I were able to distribute meds. So here I am again back in school, taking those math classes to become a registered practical nurse. And this time it's easier than ever before because I was able to find some online classes where I can go at my own pace and I have one year to complete these courses for only $40 a course. As I crush through these problems, it's still difficult for me and it does take all my attention. Having not done any math in 20 years, 
and now going back to do things that were difficult is actually really empowering because this time around I seem it seems like that fog and that cloudiness of my mind that didn't allow me to focus has been lifted because life is a lot more stable now than it was when I was 20. I actually have a shot. So I went to ILC at tvo.org. This is not a sponsored video. It's just something I think will be helpful to share with you. Check out that website if you want to make up some prerequisites so that you could advance your career. If you're thinking about becoming a personal support worker and you have the prerequisites to become a registered practical nurse, then do that. It's two years, but if you have the support, if you're able to do it, do it. Don't waste your time. If you're already a personal support worker, maybe it's starting to hit you that in 20 years, you'll still be a personal support worker unless you do something different. There's no promotion coming. And if you find yourself getting frustrated with less experienced RPNs because you're a very experienced PSW, that might be another clue that you're ready to advance your career. My name is Ruthann. I'm a personal support worker and the owner of Forest City Home Care. Thank you for watching.